to somebody who is operating from a high havingness, it's nothing. I've never heard anybody say yeah. high havingness. Yeah. I haven't told anybody this before. Yes. And the key term is growing together. That's right. And. Hello and welcome to another incredible show, The Elena Cardone Show. <laughs> Today I'm bringing you the most fascinating, amazing woman over here from Africa. Yes. <laughs> Naomi Achu. I'm excited. This building is amazing. This this right here is fantastic. And I'm just happy to be sitting in front of an empire builder. Ooh, <laughs> I love that. So tell us, um, you know, how, how did you start off? How I, I know you kind of had some difficulties yes. early on. Yes. So walk me through that. You, you're in Africa. Yes. In Cameroon. Yes. Okay. What yes. does that look like? So, born in Cameroon, born in Boya, last of six kids. Mm. Um, best for last. Best for last. Thank True. you. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Don't let my brother see that or my <laughs> sister. But yeah, so it's it's been a beautiful journey. Um, now, you, now, if you know what it means to be like a, the last child, you're either spoiled or people don't always understand you. So growing up, um, there was always somebody that knew more than me. Mm. Um, so I didn't always have a voice. And where are they yeah. always trying to tell you what to do? Yes. And, and mm -hmm. it was always, well, I've been there before. Mm -hmm. I've seen it happen already. So just do as we tell you. But you, but if you, if you think about life, you have to go through certain experiences to be able to appreciate certain things. So I found my voice through music. Mm. I was like, okay, when I speak, no one really listens to me. So maybe if I sing, you know, I can get some attention. And that's how I started singing. Uh, incredible. How, did, how yeah. did you discover you could sing? Well, I didn't really, well, I consider myself a songwriter. Mm. So I started off writing songs. Um, Whitney Houston was my inspiration, watching her sing The Greatest Love of All. Oh. I knew I wanted to be an entertainer. I didn't know how I sounded, how, you know, I didn't know, I didn't care. I just knew that I wanted to be an entertainer. And then one day when I was vacuuming, just doing some chore at home, I started writing this song called Smile. Very innocent, very age appropriate song for a how seven, old? eight year old. Oh. Yeah. Right. And then I just uh, kept on writing songs um, from that point on. That was in England. So yes. how did you go from Africa to England so, at seven? So my dad uh, got a job working with the embassy, mm. the Cameroon embassy in London. Mm. So once he got that position, we all moved with him. Mm -hmm. So it was it, it was a great experience because I see I was in a classroom with children from all over the world. Yes, I had friends from Sri Lanka. Because this is the embassy. Australia. Well, yes. Well, also because it, that's just how the classrooms were in England. Oh, wow. They're probably still like that. But the particular school where I was at, um, it just had a very, a, a great variety of, 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 of people. My, one of my best friends was from Greece, uh, Gaia. I had Shanti, people from Spain. I had friends from Jamaica, some from America. But I just had, a, you know, I was just exposed to people from all over the world. And what did that do for you? It really opened up my eyes. Mm -hmm. It made me very like colorblind. You see, love I that. Yeah, it, it made me so colorblind uh -huh. and it made me love the world and I love to travel. Whether I'm performing or not, I just like to get on the plane and just go somewhere just to learn mm -hmm. and just to eat the food, of course. Oh, I love that too. <laughs> yes. So did you come from an affluent background? <laughs> Well, I guess that's relative, right? Um, that's relative. So I would say my dad was, okay, I'm going to tell you a story of two achus. I've never told this story before. Oh, I okay, love so this. Okay, so there were two achus. One achu is going to take an exam that's going to take him outside of the country. So that achu goes to the other achu and says, hey, I'm about to go take an exam. Do you wish to come with me? Let's take this exam together and leave the country. Okay. So my brother follows. I mean, mm. my, my dad follows. That was the second at you. Okay. But the first at you that took him didn't pass, but he did. So, yeah. So his, his friend, his brother changed his life. But guess what? So, you know, that was, that was something big. 
that was done for him. However, the person who was left behind oh. became very, very successful. He became a governor. My dad was never a governor. <laughs> he he was he, he did very well for his family because he was the last child too. He was like yeah he was the last child of his brothers and sisters. So he did very well for his family and his brothers and sisters because he was the first one to go outside of the country and be that person. Um, and that was a big thing coming from Cameroon. But um, the other Ashu, the first one, he became more successful. So I, I look at that. You know, when I look at that lesson, I just say, I always have to remember, I have to give back. So whatever was given to my dad, I have to give it back, if it makes any sense, because somebody gave him this opportunity. So I always have to remember that, that I always have to give opportunities to others and not worry about what I'm going to get back. And because how do the person you, how who do gave you him, do that, mm -hmm. like in, in life? Uh, yes. I mean, I know you give through yes. your music. Yes, yes. Well, through, you know, when I go out into the communities, I give. And I don't think too much about what I'm going to get back because, once again, in my dad's situation, the person who was giving him was not thinking about that. And they were blessed more than he was. And sometimes your blessings are not going to come from the person that's sitting in front of you. Mm -hmm. It's from the universe or from somebody else. You know, that's karma, right? There's good karma, there's bad karma. So good karma is a thing. And it's it, you just have to keep giving and not think too hard about, well, is this person going to give back to me? Or you just have to do what you got to do from your heart. So how do you handle circumstances where people do do you wrong? Well, okay, so those are people that you may just want to step back. You may just want to like, you know, you see them, you analyze the situation, you love them from a distance. So do you yeah. ha you handle them directly on or do you just kind of slowly disconnect or how do you handle that? <laughs> That's a very good question. And do you feel angry? <clears throat> so if it's a friend, mm -hmm. if it's like a bestie, then I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah. You know, but if it's in, if it's a business space, if we're talking about uh, a, a, a business and growing, I don't need to tell you that, you know, because once again, I may need you tomorrow. You just, you know, you never know who you're going to need tomorrow. People go through life. Right. And once again, karma, right? If somebody hurts you, they're probably going to hurt the next person and then the next person and then they, they're going to end up hurting themselves. So you have to let them figure themselves out and turn around and come back and say, hey, you know what? I just realized that I may have hurt you. But you have to give them that space to realize that. So this is obvious hurt that we're talking about. Or yeah. like, but do you communicate with the small things on what bothers you? I do. Yeah. I do. But yeah. it also depends on the <laughs> the chain of command, right? It depends on where I am on the um what you call it? Uh, the circle of the circle of life, or no? There's a uh, the like the pecking order, yes, like yes, the yes. ladder. So you yes. you you think there's a pecking order? I think so. Yeah. Um, well, okay, and I also think it it comes with my background. Respect is a very very big thing in Africa. Mm. Yes, yeah, so you just have to respect your elders. It doesn't matter what they do, what they don't do. So I. You know, every day I'm learning to merge the African child in me mm -hmm. with the um, American or the outside African person to blend it in. But I would never, in a it, as a traditional, I would never um, be too objective. Yes, to somebody who is either senior to me in a workspace or in age. But really? that, that is just the African child in me. Okay, so let's talk about the African child. Yes. How, how is, I like this, the respect for the elders. Yes. That's one key component. I can see a difference maybe perhaps with American children. Yes. Who maybe that's not so indoctrinated in. Yes. Should be, but isn't. Yes. Um, maybe fully. How else do you think, like what else do you think that you specifically got from Africa that you see different from America? Uh, so yes, the respect, of course, the respect aspect. And I mean, really, that's it. That's the biggest thing. Um, the food is different, of course, the yeah. language is different. But I would say the biggest thing is that is, is the respect and how people relate to each other. But here's what I'm doing with my daughters. Okay. Um, I, I ask them to uh, vocalize or to, to tell me how they feel. Mm -hmm. It's very important for me that my children are able to say, mommy, I like this, and mommy, I don't like this. They even have a say in my music. 
sometimes I'll be with them in the studio and I'll say, do you like this? Do you not like this? And sometimes when I'm stepping out, I'll say, "Does do you give mommy the permission to be great? And then they'll Ooh. say, yes. Do I have your permission to be great? They say, yes, mommy, you have our permission. Because that way they feel like they're part of it. Oh, I love that. Yes. And they'll never tell me no, because I always come back with something. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's very yes. powerful. I love including the children into yes. the into the the team yes you know and yes. so they don't have to go through this limbo phase of feeling they don't fit in or they have to wait to become an adult to yes. matter yes so yes. i love that yes earlier you said something that i think is interesting when you went to the school in london you said you were colorblind yes what does what does that look like and what does it mean to not be colorblind Colorblind simply means you're seeing people as a, you see somebody as a human being. Mm -hmm. Yes, because at the end of the day, we're we, we're one race, and the race is the human race. That's right. Yes. So, I mean, if you think about you're you know you're in a classroom and you're fighting over pens and pencils with somebody from Sri Lanka, and you know you're picking up a uh, dirt from the floor, doing cleanup with somebody from Spain. You you don't see what others see. I'll tell you something. Okay. So by my teacher. She was British. She was British white. She would always tell me that my skin was kissed by the sun. Ooh. Yeah. So I was like six, Beautiful seven. Vision, I was huh? like, well, thank you. Didn't, yeah. <laughs> it sounds magical. Yes. I felt very good about myself. So there was a time I went back to Cameroon uh, when my dad finished working at the embassy. So I followed him, me and my other sister, the last two. Um, and I followed him. That was when I realized that there was such a thing as being different in my own country. So the, really, what, yes. what do you mean? Why were you different in your own country? So here we are in boarding school and everybody's, circ everybody's walking around the light-skinned girl. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know that that was a thing. Oh. So the light-skinned girls probably got more gifts than I did, like on their birthdays, and they would celebrate them a little bit more. But I didn't even know that that was a thing. Now, now so you you have noticed this for yourself. You saw this for yourself, yes. or did somebody say something and point it out to you? Oh no, I I saw it. It was just a difference. It was a culture shock. <laughs> it was a shock for me because wow. I realized that oh, okay, so dark skinned girls are lesser privileged than light skinned girls. That was something that I observed. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. But because the my, the, my, my self-worth was ingrained in me from my teacher in that elementary school, nobody could tell me anything. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to teach, to tell children who they are from that tiny age of three, four, five, six. I do affirmations with my daughters because... No, no one can tell me anything. Now, was this within the black community or were there white people? No, like, this tell was. Tell me how this, how does this happen? Well, yeah. This was a totally Cameroonian classroom. So all, so all black. Yes. So all why black. would an all, like, help me to understand. Yes. Yes. Why would an all black community do that to a child or anyone for that matter like well, where, was, where do, like where does that come from in africa yes because i would think okay yeah yeah maybe i see why that happens in america but yes explain do you even know like how does that happen in africa well see it was amongst ourselves right it was it was the girls amongst the girls it was we were all the same age we were all studying the same thing it was it was a boarding school but you know, where, so do, we, where, where, do, where do you, where do you, like, how does, how does a child even know to think, oh, the light skin is more desirable than a dark skin? Like, how, where does that come generational, from? Generational. Generational. Why would that be a generational, generational. from Africa? If you're a light skinned it. woman, your bride price is higher than your the what? bride price. The bride price. Yes, the bride price is the gift that the groom brings to the family of the bride. Now, who, to, to who pay. said that? Yeah, so your price, in some cultures, not every culture, but in, uh, let's say, Nigeria, the Igbo culture, um, the bride price is generally higher for a woman who is light-skinned. So sometimes the uh, the girls growing up, they bleach their skin. Some are naturally light-skinned. Some are very naturally light-skinned, but some others, they choose to bleach their skin because they want to be seen as beautiful. Mm. I, I do think that things are changing in 2023, mm -hmm. um, but it hasn't always been that way. But light skin has always been a thing. That's yes. fa I'm fascinated. Yes, I'm yes. sorry to be so like, yes, yes. you know, because I, I, did, I had no idea this, yeah. this, this is e even a... Mm -hmm. A but situation it's not, in the. But if you think about Africa. it, it's not just in Africa. Here too, 
light skin girls, you know. I, yeah. Mm. But I'm, you know, but it never does. It doesn't do anything to me because I know who I am, you know, but, you know, if you, if anybody who had not, okay, that's why I love the experience that I had in England because I know my worth. When you look at me as a global, somebody that belongs, that is a citizen of the world, I'm very valuable in my natural state. Yes, but if you if you grow up in a village or a smaller community where you were trained to know that or to think that your color has to be a certain type of color to 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 bring home an ex, you know a, a rich man, then you know. So it's all about the mind. How do we change the generational mindset on this? Like we're talking about millions of people. I don't, talking about. I, I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm, <laughs> I'm stuck and stymied and on how it even started in the first place. If this is happening in Africa. Well, you know, you're starting, you're starting to break the generational curse okay. by having me here and asking these questions, you know, so you're, you're at the beginning of this because now people get to listen to this conversation and think, okay, well, all right, well, I think this way about myself because I grew up in this kind of a community, but mm -hmm. if I had traveled the world, I would have realized that I am also very valuable because I am unique. Right. You know, but not everybody thinks that way. Right. You know, that's the African girl child that is trying to um, find her place in the world. Yes, I just posted something about um, I was uh, I shared TEDx Kids with the Muslim girls. That was my favorite classroom to be in. Yes, because I see a lot of Muslim women doing great things in the society today. And to be in that class with Muslim girls who already, not only are they African, not only are they girls, then they have limitations being a Muslim child. Mm. But I was just happy to be in that space and to see them being so happy and welcoming. Thank you for doing that, by yes. the way. Thank you for, for making it possible. So, okay, I, I'm going to move off of it in a yes, minute. I yes, swear, yes, I'm yes. still stuck on it. Yeah. Um, do you wish people would see people in... Um, what did you call it? Bl uh, color Colorblind. Blind. Yes. Do you, so, so I've had this mm -hmm. accusation before, so mm -hmm. I'm very careful now as to, you know, how I word things. You can tell me anything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've seen everything. <laughs> I'm not worried about you so much. I'm worried about the context that people take. I things. understand. But we're, we are, I am trying to break down this, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very spiritual yes. and I believe in what you said, humanity mm -hmm. and mankind. Yes. That, that, that's, um, that's something I, it makes me emotional because yes. I feel like if, if you take it, like if there's aliens, right. Mm -hmm. And they were coming down and they, let's say they killed like half of the population of the planet mm -hmm. and we had to rally together in order to save ourselves as species. Yes. Don't you think if if that severe of a moment would happen, we would not care anymore about color of skin and yes. this and that because we would unite as mankind and what I like we'd that. have to do to save the species? Yes. So I kind of think on those terms. Like I feel like, you know, I'm connected to the people across the world. Yes. At, on a spiritual level and dynamic. Yes. And so, but but I've been accused before because I kind of... I don't know if the words judge, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I I kind of look at people on their production and yes. their values. And, um, you know, so when I walk through the office, I, yes. I really don't see or it doesn't stand out to me. And this is why I've been accused of yes. being that I'm not aware mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that 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 like that was the first time I was made wrong for having the experience because I. I, when I walk around the office, I'm not saying, oh, that person's black or that person's yes. Latin or that's a woman or uh, although the, the women do stand <laughs> out to me, I will admit because I love women. But but I don't and I don't go, oh, there's our homosexual or there's this. I look right. at what's the production? How are Correct. they doing? Does that person do drugs, not do drugs? Correct. Is that, how does that person with the family? And so because I kind of had this little color blindness thing, yes. because I feel like because of the color of my skin, yes. I felt like that certain 
the group attacked me yes. a little bit saying that I'm insensitive for not like seeing mm. that. Yes, yes, yes. Do you know yes. what I'm saying? Yes, but I mean, when I look at you, I look at somebody who's looking at production. You know, if you do the work, it doesn't matter what color I am, black. If I'm, if you know, if I'm working with you, right, and you give me right. a task to do, right, I know I have to, you know, do the work at a particular time. It has nothing to do with color. Um, but I will tell you this: we may have to go to Africa <laughs> because it is my bucket list item. Yes. So I was passing out the books, and they were like, "Can I get a signature? Can you sign this for me?" And I was like, "What am I going to do?" So this is what I did: I said, "Naomi, at you for Grant and Elena Cardone. I'll show you a video too." Oh, are you serious? Yes. Ghana, where I just uh, came from, is just good with people. They're very hospitable. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of Ghana. Oh, I have a little something for you. No way. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. Oh I couldn't come God. back without getting something for the Miss Elena Cardone. This is beautiful. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is a, this goes with my outfit. I love it. This is amazing. Do they look good on me? They look beautiful on you. Aww, so those are sugar you. beads. Yeah, those are sugar, sugar beads. beads. And um, a lot of um, African jewelry oh. is associated with wow. uh, terms. So I wore those beads to meet the chief of Obomeng. You wore these? Yes. Yes, to meet the Thank chief of, of Obomeng. Yeah, that was when I was meeting the chief. He gave me a piece of land and residency there. I was visiting his clinic as my NGO, International Nurses for Africa. Mm -hmm. So I was like, it would, it, it, it's, yeah, it's precious to me. So I wanted you to have it. Thank you. So what do you say to me on the colorblind thing? I would say. You tell me. Yes. Because I shut it down. I was like, I'm never <laughs> saying anything like that again. Like ever. I'm very sensitive. No matter what you do, people are going to judge you and judge back. You know, you just. They're just always going to. Yeah. If somebody's No matter not, what you do. I get into spaces <clears throat> and I get judged because I say this. And, no matter what you do. But I will say travel more. Mm. Yes. And okay. that's where I I did. Why, yeah, I, why, why, why? What does the travel more do? It, it kind just of... opens up your mind. And when I say travel, because I know you've been around, you've been to see you. I know you've been to many places. Mm. But when I say travel, I mean, like, get on a camel or just just relax and just eat maybe some, you know, eat something different. Um, hold hands of a, a four year old African mm. child or go to India, it will just, I don't know, it just changes your mindset naturally. Right. Now, it's, it's not a process. It's not one of those ABCs. It's, it's it, your mindset will naturally just change. I love that. In a positive way. I love that. Yes. Do people ever um, give you grief for mm -hmm. associating with white people? No. Ever? No. They like that about me. They do? Yes, because I, I once again, I, um, I'm, I think, I don't like to toot my horn, but I'm very relatable. You are very relatable. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I just walk into a room as myself. You know, I don't try to be anything I'm not, you know. Me too. What I have is what I have, and what I don't have is what I don't have. Mm -hmm. And what I'm working on is what I'm working on, because mm -hmm. nobody is perfect. That's right. You know, so I don't try to be perfect. But I always am in a space of learning. Mm. Yes. But no, no, no. They like that about me because I'm just relatable to everybody. I try to be at least. So Beautiful. Yeah. What's one of the biggest challenges that you've had in your life? Because you sound like you've had a glorious <laughs> life no, so far. No. I mean, it just is like, oh, take me with you on all the trips. No. And... I just see the beauty in things. I love that. You know, I lost my I dad a couple of days ago. Yeah. And I was crazy. It was crazy, but I see the beauty Wait, in it. Wait, you lost your dad a yes. couple of days ago? Yeah. I just... Did I know this? I know, maybe not. You but said it's... You, you know this. I, I didn't know I this. I see the beauty in things. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> Let's keep going. Let's keep I'll going. I'll tell you about it. Okay. No, he, no, well, thank he, you for being here. He had a wonderful life. He That's had a beautiful. wonderful life and his, his wife was holding his hand. Um, his other kids, you know, he had six kids. So, you know, he, he went very, very well. But I just, I tend to see the beauty in things. And what um, I think what has killed me in my past is trust. 
Mm. Because, yes, because I have a, I like to call it an empathetic spirit. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, and that's where, you know, you, as an empath, we have to use our judgment. We mm -hmm. have to be able to judge better. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, the, the trust comes a little easy because, see, when you're somebody who's trustworthy, you tend to feel like the next person is trustworthy, you know. because you you, Yes, exactly. And so what I do with my empathy or my empathetic self is I look for ways to give back that are creative. Because if you're a natural empath, you're going to find a way to give. It doesn't matter how, where. So if you're putting all your energy in giving back to the community and serving the community, you won't have time to expose yourself to people that are not necessarily healthy for your growth. Mm -hmm. So how is the biggest, well, give us an example of the biggest challenge or, or, an example of what happened to me? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The biggest, you really want to? Oh, yeah, yes. go ahead. Oh, yes. The biggest <laughs> challenge. Well, just. Because, um, yeah, we need to know how somebody goes through something. Yes. And then turns out to be able to see the beauty in others. Because there's a lot of people out there struggling. So somebody that's close to you will. Um, no, 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 no. Tell me the time. Somebody, the time? Like your time. My, my time? Yeah, your challenging time. Yeah, so my challenging time, somebody who was close to me. Oh, got it. Yes. Somebody who was close to me, we were working on a project. We were working on something. So I got burnt financially. They stole your money? It's something like that, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I trusted them mm -hmm. because I had known them for years. Now, time out <laughs> before you continue the <laughs> yes, story. Yes, In hindsight. Yes. How many red flags did you overlook? I feel attacked. <laughs> I feel attacked. No, because I, 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 cause this happened to me. Yeah. Because it happened to me. I ignored I've lost life. millions. I've yes. been sued. I've been, like, these are people that I love. Yes. And I, and I hated it. And I wanted to yes. quit. And yes. I, I felt like I wanted to go do drugs and alcohol again. Because yes. I was like, yes. dang it. I was like, this sucks. I, and then... I looked at it and I said, where can I take responsibility? And and I yes. th this is why I asked the question. Yes. You. Definitely not to attack yes. you. Yes, yes. But to go in hindsight, now that you know what you knew, because I overlooked at least five. But see, and mm. I do the same thing or I did the same thing because you have that faith that if you give this person a second chance, they're going to change and they're going to appreciate the fact that, you know, you have, you've brought them in, but people, a lot of people don't learn, you know, you just, it, it's sad. It's mm -hmm. sad from an emp from an empath standpoint, we want to save the world. You You're know? right. I know. Yes. And that's what they do. They play on your, because yes. it's a strength. Yes. But it can also, it's an asset, but yes. it can also be a liability. Yes. So all assets, assets become liabilities because yes. if you want to help everyone, yes, that can also be a little bit of a weakness. Exactly. It can be a little bit of a naivete. Exactly. That they use. Yes. And then they sit in. behind and they chuckle. Ha ha ha. We yeah, got her. <laughs> we, that's right. But so, now, did that person like? What do do you have one red flag that you missed? I know yes. I missed which one. I missed a lot of red flags. Um. Well, when I gave certain instructions and they didn't follow and they overlooked the instructions mm. and yes, they gave. So they twist it. Would it yes. always cause some sort of small little damage, yes. drama? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, they would do it again and again. And because so they were repeat offenders. Yes. Yep. And because they brought value in a different way. I, you know, thought you needed them. Yes. Because they make themselves valuable. Yes. I know it. Yes. So, but I got burnt. I really got burnt. But I learned to cut my losses. How much money did you lose? Oh my gosh. Whew. I haven't told anybody this before. Like hundreds of thousands. <laughs> yeah. How long did it take to recover from that? And when did you realize it was all gone? Tell me about that day. I realized it was all gone when I realized that she was lying to me. How did you realize she was lying to you? Well, you know, the proof is in the pudding. If you tell me you just spoke to somebody and they, something's going to happen by the end of the day and it doesn't happen by the end of the day and I ask you the next day, what happened? Oh, yeah, well, if the story keeps changing day after day after day, then I know that, okay, this wasn't true. Mm. Yeah, so, you know, so now you're just telling me so stories to just keep me engaged right and did she yes. disappear once you figured her out or what happened like did she how did she take your money she invested it in an investment that went bad or she literally took the money and ran 
so the way I'm not going to say she took my money, but she made me lose money. By advising you poorly? Yes. Yes. And did she benefit from that somehow? Oh, yes. She got a piece of the action? Yes. But you mean from the other side? See, and I don't even know. I don't even know. But when I realized that she was not being productive, mm -hmm. it's all about the production, right? So I said, okay, well, let me wait a while and see if she's going to be productive. And I realized that I waited a little bit too long. Mm -hmm. Yes, I waited too long. and she. Why was did not you wait so long? Faith. Mm. I had faith in her mm -hmm. because this is somebody I was very close to and somebody who had access to my children. Empires are, are, are killed from within. Yes. They're destroyed from within. Yes. They do the most damage. Yes. You think they're your friends. Yes. Elaborate. Yes. Yes. But you know, the way I just, I just take that as a learning lesson and you know, I'm very, you know, I, I go to God a lot. I talk to God mm -hmm. a lot and I say, God, whatever you're trying to give me in this next season must be bigger than what I have right now. Because if you are teaching me this lesson right now, what you're going to give me is probably going to be 10 times more. And you want to make sure that I don't make this kind of mistake. It's better to make the mistake now than to lose. It's better to lose a dollar than to lose a million. Yeah. So I was like, okay, let me take that loss right now. And that's a lesson learned. And how, how long did it take you to re rebuild that? Uh, I like to think I'm still rebuilding. I'm always building, but I was able to just... I think it's a mindset thing, yeah. right? Um, when you have a mindset of a winner, whatever you're losing, you just have to think bigger. Oh, okay, well that Good that's that's you. a big loss to mm -hmm. somebody who doesn't have. Uh -huh. But some, but to somebody who is operating from a high havingness, it's nothing. I've never heard anybody say yeah. high havingness before. Yeah. Yes, big That's havingness, big... high havingness. Yeah, but I was just wow. like, I have to think about this. If 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 God has given me this empire, if God is putting me in places that, um, you know, that are destined for me, and if He's expanding my territory, this loss is just a, just a, a drop in the ocean. That's right, because mm -hmm. if you have the empire mindset and the high havingness, yes, and then all of a sudden you're able to have your mind be so big, and you put yourself like as a billionaire. Yes. And you're like, would a billionaire, well, I'll answer that question. Yes, because <laughs> now I am. But I love it. Multi, multi, like, let, let's pretend like they're not me. Yeah. Like a multi, multi-billionaire really be upset over a few no. hundred thousand dollars. No. no. So then it gets you off from being on that scarcity mindset, which I yeah. love how you can always see the beauty in things. Yes. Because then it, it it lets you go of the scarcity mindset of like, oh my God, I could only do this this one time and yes. now I'm ruined. Yes. Into like, okay, now action. How do I go even bigger? Mm -hmm. um, so it is yes. really an opportunity. Yes. yes. And that's what I've learned from moving around in life, like living in England and then going to boarding school in Cameroon where we had to, where things were strict. We had to fetch water from the, from the stream sometimes. Yes. Yes. But it was a, it, it was an experience. It, it builds your character. It makes mm -hmm. you appreciate life. Yes. I'm able to appreciate life in all circumstances. Wow. Beautiful. And that's because of the schooling. Yeah, the schooling, the upbringing and traveling and seeing different things and realizing that everybody's unique and no one's perfect. And we all have our biases in our heads, but that's really just because of word? biases. What is that? A uh, 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 judgments we we we, we, we judge oh, biases Bi you're yes. at, you have a little biases. bit of an accent yes yes, yes. ma'am <laughs> maybe it's that london thing maybe okay maybe and biases, then sometimes yeah. i mix it I'm with sorry. my Go broken ahead. english mm. biases yes Your english uh, is perfect what are you talking you. about you don't have thank broken you. english i'm gonna teach you broken english say okay. this after me okay no talk for me so no talk for me so <laughs> yes that Did means I do it right that means don't talk to me like that oh <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah. So when you're having a joke with your husband, you can say, ah, "No talk for me." So I mean, don't no talk, talk to me for like me. So yes. Okay. I like that. <laughs> That's broken English. I love it. Yes. yes. Um. So okay. So what do you say? What advice do you have for the young woman out there right now who doesn't have the means to travel mm -hmm. and doesn't have the mindset and didn't go to the, but is not feeling 
like they they're not in a positive mindset yes. right now. How does that person take one step? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be perfect, yes. but how do they take one step mm -hmm. to 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 be more like how you are? I would say uh for them to be true to who they are. Yes, for them but if to they're find feeling out. bad right now, if, yes. they're, if they don't feel good, if they yes. don't, you know, they don't have a lot of self-worth mm -hmm. or, you know, how do they like take that one step? Like, what would they do? Find a mentor. Mm. Yes, find somebody that, oh, yeah, I, I, I go to my mentors a lot. I call them up. A lot of mm. my, my, my friends are like my mom's age mm. because they've been through a lot. Mm -hmm. And yes, and they, they're not going to be really judgmental because they understand. Mm -hmm. So I would say find a mentor, find, find somebody, find a second mom, you know, because sometimes you know, parents can be judgmental. So I, you know, um, I know my daughters can't come to me for everything. That's right. You know, so, but I would say find a mentor and go talk to them and express what you're feeling and have them guide you. Find one or two or three. Oh, that is beautiful words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you. Um, are you yeah. married? No, was. Oh. Yes. Hunt yes. the name. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I had tell two kids with my husband. You did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where did with my ex husband tell me about this whole scene? Yeah. So, uh, the co parenting is really good. He's a nice guy. Uh, well, he's wife. a good father. Okay, good. Yes. That's important. Yes. Yes. And uh, we try to comp Well, I try to compartmentalize everything to the kids. Right. Yes. Yeah, so whatever's happening in his life, or you know, yeah, I, I don't get involved. Yes, it's more whenever we speak, it's about, oh, how are the kids doing? And what are the kids' needs when they're with me? I'll tell them, hey, this is what they need. So all our conversations are about what the kids need. And so far, the kids seem to be doing very well. Do you talk ill will about him in front of the kids? No. Does he about you? I don't know. I couldn't tell you because, you know, um, I couldn't tell you. But I don't talk bad because, you know, to me, if I speak bad about my children's father, then mm. that speaks about my decision in men. Mm -hmm. So why would I speak bad about? So what was I thinking being with him? If You know? Wow. So, yeah, I, I, I could never speak bad about my children's father. Right. Yes. And good for you. Yes. Because he gave me my two beautiful girls. Right. So, yeah, it is what it is. That's right. Yeah, I'm not perfect. He's not perfect. We're all on this journey called life. That's right. Yes. And it is not always easy. Yes. But I bet that's very stabilizing for the children, knowing like, okay, they don't have to, that that, that strain isn't yes. put on them. Yes. Now, I don't know what's happening on the other end, but I do you provide take them with a very loving environment. You yeah. know, I do affirmations with them as often. I tell them, I hate, I tell them, say, uh, I tell them, repeat after me. I am kind. I am loved. I am protected. My mom mm. loves me. My mm. dad loves me. Mm. So yes, yes. I always do affirmations with them and remind them who they are. Where do y'all live? Maryland. Okay. Yes. The whole thing. He does too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I travel a lot. So I, people ask me, where do you live? Sometimes I say Maryland. Sometimes I say Miami. Sometimes I say DC. Do you have a home here? Maryland. No, no I don't have. Not in Miami. No. Not I would yet. love to. The Miami is beautiful. I love oh, the trees. I love Miami too. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, so, okay. So you divorced the husband. Yeah. Are you dating? Yeah. What are you looking for in, like, uh, what are the non-negotiables? Let's start there. A vision. He has to have. He a has vision. to have a vision. The non-negotiables are well. I don't think too much about the non because no one's perfect. I think about the, uh, the what I do want. What is do you want? Someone with a vision. Yeah, someone with a strong vision. Someone who likes to travel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, someone who's open-minded to what? To to trying different things. Mm -hmm. Um. And, and someone who's, I think someone who's also good with money, financially, you financially uh, responsible. Uh, responsible, because it's one thing to have a lot of money, but it's another thing to know what to do with it True. and to know how to flip it. Right. Yeah. So invest it, multiply yes. it. Thank you. Mm. 10X it. Oh, <laughs> you're speaking my love language now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. And someone who loves God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. and and obviously monogamous, right? Of course, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Polygamy is a thing in Africa a lot, but I, I, really? I think... Really? Yes, yes. You can have no it... No way. Yes. I did not know that. Yes, it's it's common. Um, one of my uncles had two wives. 
Um, oh, yeah, it's very common in Africa. Really? That yes. is a foreign concept here. So, yes, I think in Africa, it's you can have several wives if you're able to take care of them. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see a chief with maybe 50 wives, but, you know, they live in the compound with him. Yeah, they live in the compound How and he takes care of all of them. How this man not be insane? <laughs> How can, I mean, one, now you're talking yes. 50? Yes, but it all it all boils down to how you look at women. Mm -hmm. Do you look at women as are you looking at a woman as your partner? Do you see eye to eye, or is it more of a tribal thing or a cultural thing, and is it more of a power thing? So once again, it depends on, you know, the so generation. So you could be open to multiple wives. No, 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 not for you. No, you're no. not you're not adopting that. N no, because tradition. No, because I'm a lot. You know, I have I have visions, and I. <laughs> And you need like focus. Exactly. Okay. Did you learn that from abroad? What? Uh, like, like, so where you grew up in your town, that was common? Well, the multiple it, wives thing. I mean, because if you if you grew up with it, then you're not going to know to think, oh, this is odd. like, it's not odd. It's just not so I'll something say, that we know. So what we don't know seems a little exactly. confusing. So. Well, I'll say out of 100 marriages, probably only maybe five are polygamous. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's not we we see it, right? But it's not like you know crazy crazy because you have to be able to provide for them. Okay. You know, um, but yeah, but my parents were, uh, you know, they they were they be, they were married for over fifty years. You and know, they were and, together. Yes, and they were together, and you know, he had just one wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I know is what I grew Which, up in. You're right. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what about your uh, inner circle? Like, how many, do you have close friends, a lot of friends? Tell me about your inner circle. I used to have a lot of friends, Elena, but I don't have any. <laughs> I am, you're, what, why are we like so similar? <laughs> I used to have a lot. I can't have too many friends. Why? It's you just, don't have time? You don't trust them? What is it? So I, I trust guy friends more than I trust female friends. Really? But I think it's because guys, I think when it comes to certain business decisions, they're a little bit more level-headed. And I think girls and women, we, we tend to sometimes be more emotional. Mm. Yes. So I think that um, not, a lot of, not a lot of women have emotional intelligence per se, emotional you can be really really intelligent and really 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 smart but when it comes to like working with another woman and building an empire with another woman mm. not a lot of women understand that mm. you know yes if if i had my way girls and women would be doing more work together because you see we have a strength of being able to multitask so what what happens when you have five multitaskers in one room you, you can take over totally yes that's my team yes you know so but you know not every and maybe once again it just depends on who i've been surrounded by it, it all depends on my surroundings but um I don't have too many female friends, but the ones that I do are people that I, I run to and that I can learn from. Mm -hmm. Yes. Me too. Uh, yes. Like there's a purpose for a friend. See, yes. Previously, I had friends because I thought, well, I was young and I just thought you just have friends. Everybody has friends. We yes. don't question that we have friends. You yes. need friends. Everybody knows you yes. need friends. Have friends. So I yes. had all these friends. There was no qualifiers. Anyone could be my friend. I had all these friends. Yes. And then as now I've evolved and really gotten intentional and really what does it take to build an empire? What does that even look like? And, yes. And now I look at every single role in the empire. I know yes. that no empire was built alone. No. No, right. You never. need people. Oh, yes. But then I started looking at these quote unquote friends and I'm like, well, this is the vision that yes. you talk about. Yes. And what is their vision and does it align? And yes. are they going to help me reach a heightened level of success? And yes. can I help them? Exactly. And if they're not interested and sold into this mission, then go build your own empire. Exactly. Like yes. it's draining yes. to me. I don't have time anymore to just like sit in a room, mm -hmm. drink alcohol and bitch about my boyfriend. This was before Grant. <laughs> I, you know yes, what I'm yes, saying? Yes, like, yes, yes. You know what I mean? Because that's yes. like a waste of time or to commiserate on how horrible life is or whatever. So mm -hmm. so now it's really interesting that the, the friends that I do have, which are very small and usually yes. they're business partners yes, that yes. end up being my friends because yes. that's that's mentally where I'm at and we're mutually helping each other for a goal. Yes. And the key term is growing together. That's right. And 
me being able to pour into you and you being able to pour into me. Because if I'm with you and all I'm doing is taking, 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 it's like exhausting. you said, it's exhausting and draining. It doesn't right. help you. Right. I have to be able to check on you. How are you? Even if I have nothing to give you at a particular point in time, I can check on you. That's right. You know, check on your mental health, give you a glass of water, something. Yes. Something. So, yeah. Well, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, you're so amazing. I'm trying to be like you. <laughs> really? Yeah. How did yeah. you discover me? Well, Clubhouse. I've been in your rooms on Clubhouse. Are you serious? Yes, during the pandemic. Yes, I was in a lot of your rooms. On a lot of, I was in a lot of Grant's rooms. Yes, Clubhouse just really opened a lot of doors. It just, you know, I miss Clubhouse. But that was... You're off of it now? Well, no, I go there from time to time. I have my little tribe, the Queen mm -hmm. of Amanda tribe, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but, Are you on X? Uh, I Twitter think so. X. Like, yes, yes, they I'm, do the like, yes, sort of clubhouse spaces now. They do spaces. I, I am not as often. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a Facebooker and Instagrammer, and I'm mm -hmm. trying to be a TikToker. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, but yeah, I met you on Clubhouse. That was where I first heard your voice, mm. and then uh, Grant's voice, and then that was where I started following you and the family and the kids, Sabrina, and you know, I started following you outside of that. Yeah. Wow. But I can't have, uh, I can't have you on my timeline. And just be sitting on a couch eating potato chips. Not seeing what you're doing. You know what I'm trying to yeah. say? You're so motivational. You're just, you know, the words that come out of your mouth just make you want to be better. Nice. So, yeah. Well, girl, we are going to conquer the world together. Yes, ma'am. Let's do it. I love that. <laughs> I have so many plans with you. I want you to take me to Africa. I can't wait. They're going to love you. Um, yeah, yeah. I took my friend Ste Stephanie came with me, um, and she absolutely loved it. Well, well, Stephanie has been to Africa many times before, but you, yeah. And anyway, we'll talk about that later. Okay. Yes. Uh, just a couple more questions here. Mm -hmm. How important is the team? Very important because um, there is no empire that was built by one person. That's right. It's not even possible. You know, so the people that I work with, I always, um, it's important for me to make them feel seen. It's important for me to appreciate them, to say thank you. It's just, just these little, little things. And, you know, I like them to feel involved. I ask, you know, what do you think? I get feedback. But team is just so, so important. And when you have a solid team, it's important to keep them. Oh, yeah, I yes. agree. Yeah. Get them all yes. aligned with the mission, vision, yes. core values. Yes. Making a difference, contributing. Yeah. Yes. How do you pick your team? I pick my team um, sometimes outside of my family and outside of my friends. Um, people that really want it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, because sometimes, you know, family and friends or people who are close to you, they feel like, okay, well, they feel entitled, which is mm -hmm. which is understandable. You know, I mm -hmm. feel entitled to things my, that my mom has. I won't take her serious when she tells me certain things, but I know that she's my mom. And if I do anything wrong to her, she's going to forgive me. Right. Right. So um, I try to I try to mix it up. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll bring in people that are hungry. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that, you know, are, are qualified and want to be there, you know, and that want that don't want that want to learn that want to be, you know, uh, that want to grow. Yes. And then I'll mix that with, you know, the family. Do you invest in your team as far as uh, training? I, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, I invest in them as far as training. I have a um, I have a great team, actually, uh, for International Nurses for Africa, my foundation in Nigeria. Yes. Yes. Um, they, they're amazing. Um, they were supposed to come with me to Ghana, but I already had a team set up in Ghana already. Right, right. Yes. But every time I go to Africa, we just, you know, we just do bigger and better things. Mm -hmm. So um, where do your yeah. parents live? My parents. Well, England. England. Yes, yes. Yes. So we still have, um, you know, ever since we moved to England, we've we've stayed there. Okay. You know, we may have moved from house to house, but we've always had right now we're in Derby. OK. Mm -hmm. You still have family in Africa? Not immediate, not brothers and sisters. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm the last of six and we're all outside of Africa. But we have lots of cousins, mm -hmm. nieces, nephews that are in Cameroon. So God willing, next year, 2024, I'll be in Africa. I'll be in Cameroon. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know the month yet? I might have to save the date. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't bring you to Cameroon yet because Cameroon has a little bit of, I love my country. Mm -hmm. I love my country. But we, we went through, um, should I say a civil war 
a couple of yes, a couple of months years ago. It's but we, yeah. So you know we're bilingual English and French. So we In have Cameroon. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so I'm from the English part, but then there's the French part. So we've been kind of going back and forth. Um, so it hasn't really been a safe space. Okay. But I could take you anywhere else. Okay. Yes, Cameroon. I have to go by myself and prepare a place for you to make sure it's safe. Wow. Mm -hmm. How important is it to protect the empire? Oh, very. Oh my gosh. Especially after what you went through. Oh yeah. Yes, it's very important. <laughs> so how do you protect the empire? Um, well, you have, you, you can't, you got to keep your circle tight. That's right. Yes. You got to mm -hmm. keep your circle tight. Um, and you, you just got to keep your circle tight. Mm hmm I don't know what else to tell you. No, that's good. Uh, when I interviewed Venus Williams at 10X Ladies, yes. she said no slow deaths. So meaning when somebody in the empire reveals themselves and you kind of see who they are, yes, they, they got to go. Like she's mm -hmm. not like, oh, I need to save this person or work with this person or have yes, faith yes, with this person yes. or give them a second chance. She says no slow deaths. They're gone because she's so busy trying to protect that's that very, empire. And that's very it. gladiator, but I, I can agree. I can agree too. <laughs> I, can agree. I can agree too. I'm yes. like, mm -mm. my empath spirit is working on that, but mm -hmm. she is very right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Last, uh, last, last questions here. What does 10 X mean to you? 10 X means. What does a 10 X lady mean to you? 10 X lady. It's easy. Just be the best that you can be. Mm. Be the best version of yourself and do not conform to who or what people think that you should be. Mm. Just look at yourself in the mirror and be the very, 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 very best that I you can be. I love that. Yeah. And what does it mean to have an empire? Having an empire means that you, um, you are responsible for uh, the growth of um, of many people, Ooh. for the health and for um, the success of of many people, that's what it means to have an empire. Because it's not just about you. If it's just about you, then you don't need an empire. Oh. You can just sit in the corner. But you're building you're building kings and queens. So you're responsible for their growth, and um, that's what it means to be. And Empress, Empress Elena. <laughs> Man, I like the sound of that. <laughs> I think that's who we're going to end off on that one. Did you hear it? You heard it from Naomi Achu. Okay, Empress Elena. Thank you so much Thank for you. your wisdom, Thank for you. your light. Thank you so I much. I felt it. Thank I feel... You better Thank having you. known you and Thank having you. you in our and space And I am so today. happy to be here. Thanks for taking responsibility for the Africa sector. Yes. Okay. And Thank bringing you. it over here and then bringing me over there. We have a lot more a to lot. do. A lot. You're going to see more from us coming soon. Africa 2024. Here we come. Here we come. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.